And so Ratchet began his adventure, hoping to become a galactic ranger. Rise and shine, Kizzle Plateau. It's 8 a.m. and it's going to be a hot one today. When people think of the mascot of PlayStation, a few names come to mind. Maybe it's Kratos, maybe it's Sackboy, maybe it's even Sly Cooper. But for many, one of the main mascots of PlayStation is Ratchet and Clank. If you're like me, you played many of the entries in the series growing up, but I personally never had played the original game. I have many fond memories of Deadlocked, so thanks to this era of remasters galore we live in, I was excited to give Ratchet and Clank 2016 a try, a remake of the original game. I was not disappointed. I love platforming 3D collectathons such as 3D Mario, Sackboy's Big Adventure, and even the Spongebob video games. So Ratchet and Clank is right up my alley. Now if you're not familiar with the series, the game is not your traditional 3D platforming collectathon, so there is a lot of rather fun combat involving many different cool futuristic weapons. But the core formula is definitely present, as you essentially travel to different worlds to complete objectives there, where you try to find all the various different collectibles and collect money for new weapons and upgrades. This version feels smooth, the graphics look great, and it's a lovable world with an extremely likable cast that leads to an amazing time playing this game. Get your wrenches handy and let's dive into the world of Ratchet and Clank 2016. As always, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment recommending some games I should try out in the future. Quick disclaimer, since a lot of the cutscenes in this game are pulled directly from the movie, I'm not going to include cutscene clips to avoid a copyright. I'm also going to provide a spoiler warning here. If you haven't played this series, I definitely recommend you to check out some of the games but I'm going to discuss the plot of this entry in particular. You have been warned. Now back to the video. What's your hurry? I thought you wanted to be a hero. <laughs> the gameplay in Ratchet and Clank is pretty straightforward. You have basic movement with running, strafing, and jumping, plus weapons with different functionality throughout the game. This includes a flamethrower, disco ball launcher, and a minion robot launcher to name a few. As you progress through the game, we get upgrades to our mobility in the form of a longer jump, higher jump, super speed for turning cranks and puzzles, and even a jetpack. I love when games start you out at a relatively standard amount of traversal abilities, then as you find equipment upgrades you become able to explore every nook and cranny of the places you visit. I particularly enjoyed the unlimited underwater breathing, as even though there's not a ton of planets with water where this is useful, it was a lot of fun on the planet Pokitaru to swim around the sea. I also found the jetpack just amazing, and my favorite planet was definitely the lava infested gas bar where it just felt so vast with so many things to do. I wish we could use the jetpack on all planets, but I understand its limitations. Hoverboard racing is also a lot of fun, and I enjoyed breezing through the levels and finding shortcuts all while trying to optimize my speed. There is also a few ship combat and turret sections in the game that provide a nice change of pace from the regular gameplay, although they are pretty standard. Clank is playable in this game as well, albeit for some shorter sections, and these sections are some nice gameplay switch-ups with some rather entertaining and sometimes even slightly challenging puzzles. While they weren't standout sections to me personally, I found them enjoyable and a nice break to add to an already amazing game. Now as for the worlds, I previously mentioned Gaspar was my favorite and this stands true. I love Gaspar and flying through the underground lava caves and the secret bases way off where you would think the map would have already ended. Not using a guide and trying to collect all the brains yourself was incredible here, and this world really rewarded your exploring. Some of the worlds are on the shorter end and not as fleshed out as I'd wish, such as Battalia, but that's made up for a bit with some good combat sections and an atmosphere of war looming in the air. I really enjoyed jetpacking around the giant room on Core 2, and even though the world felt a bit padded with lengthier clank sections, I thought both the boss fight and the jetpacking made up for this fact, as it felt awesome to fly around the villain's evil lair. Many of you may be wondering, why are 300 heavily armed warbots marching ominously towards a Class G dreadship? <laughs> the answer is simple, friends. Progress! Years ago, we were driven underground by pollution that may or may not, but most definitely was caused by my father's company. Now as for the collectibles, some of them are pretty creative. There's areas in the game where you would think you won't be able to traverse, but then you find a little hole in the ground or an entrance to that stagnant background building and you find yourself in a whole new area of the map. This made exploration feel so rewarding 
and I absolutely love games that do this. Both the holocards and gold bolts were genuinely fun to seek out, and few enough that getting the collectibles didn't feel like a chore. This is how it should be done. It felt like the perfect amount of collectibles, and the process to gather them was enjoyable. Now we finally get to the difficulty. To be honest, the game is not very difficult, especially once you get your weapons upgraded. There are a few bosses on the more challenging side, but if you're like me and take your time exploring everything, you get pretty overpowered by the end of the game. This is especially true if you have the Rhino weapons. However, I still found a lot of the combat sections enjoyable. Enemies don't die in one hit, and you are often attacked by large groups at once, providing a nice bit of challenge to keep you on your toes. Challenge mode, which is basically New Game Plus, is a nice bonus after you complete the game that ups the difficulty a bit, but by this point, you're already going to feel like an unstoppable Lombax tearing his way through all sorts of enemies. I find this satisfying, and I like games that reward you in New Game Plus. It really lets all your hard work throughout the game shine, and you feel a bit accomplished about all the sections you spent so much time on your first time around, feeling like a walk in the park now. How satisfying. Overall, Ratchet & Clank 2016 shines in the gameplay department. What it lacks in some worlds being shorter is completely made up for by awesome combat sections, cool collectibles, fun minigames, or all of the above. This is a game that genuinely is enjoyable to play and I loved being rewarded for being a completionist and explorer while relaxing and having a good time playing. Now moving on to the story. And so, Ratchet and Clank set out to fix their ship with the help of the plumber. Little did they know they would soon come so close to greatness they'd be able to hear its mighty biceps ripple. But first, they'd have to tackle a brain-eating zombie T-Rex. Hey, wait a minute. I don't recall no brain-eating zombie T-Rex. Okay, fine. Killjoy. The story is entertaining. Apparently it's linked to a movie that released alongside the game, but I actually haven't seen the movie, so I can't vouch if the story is the same in the two. Anyways, it begins with our narrator, Captain Quark, in prison. So we are spoiled that Quark is going to turn on our heroes at some point. Normally this would bother me a bit that the game spoils itself, but I actually found the anticipation of trying to figure out when he would betray us, and how, to be just as exciting as the twist itself. You see glimpses of his nefarious behavior throughout the game, he's unreliable and isn't always pleased when Ratchet succeeds in being the hero. Overall, Quark is a great antagonist. I wish I could be there to see you off, but I have an urgent appointment with my acupuncturist. Our hero, however, is a lowly Lombax working in a mechanic shop with dreams of joining the Galactic Rangers and helping them in their mission to stop Chairman Drek and Dr. Nefarious from destroying planets, all while traveling the galaxy. Ratchet ends up seizing the opportunity when he comes across a rejected warbot, our friend Clank, who warns Ratchet of an impeding warbot invasion and insists on speaking to the Rangers. So Ratchet sets out to join the Rangers in their battle, to which he finds great success. We go on various missions for the Rangers, continuing to impress them as we save everybody in our path. And finally, Clank's foretelling of the robot army intent on taking down the Rangers comes true, as we find the factory and shut it down. Eventually, Quark's betrayal is revealed, motivated by his jealousy of Ratchet and Clank's success, and this leaves the Rangers shattered. Ratchet returns to his homeworld, depressed, before eventually being convinced by Clank to return to battle to save the galaxy. How awesome! One by one, we take down Victor, Drek, Quark himself, and the true villain, Dr. Nefarious. It's a fun, light-hearted story where we see Ratchet grow from a lowly Lombax to achieving his dream of being a fully-fledged hero. As for the enemies, there is a nice variety that mostly consists of an alien species called Blarg, Warbots, and other experiments created by Dr. Nefarious such as a Snaggle Beast. I found the enemies to be a lot of fun, and their wide variety definitely made it so they didn't start to feel old. Even the slight differences, such as a Blarg riding a small helicopter, were enough to spice it up enough and keep the enemies from feeling old. They were creative, and we had more than enough different weapons and gadgets to take them down. Overall, I found the story fun, engaging, and definitely powered by some great characters. The enemies are diverse and well designed, the bosses are fun, the antagonists are cool, and our heroes are great. I enjoyed journeying to the different planets and discovering what new beast awaited our hero as we unraveled the mystery of who was behind all this evil. 
While the story can be simple at times, and it doesn't always progress quickly, it's an enjoyable experience and provides a lot of entertainment throughout. This left the game with a positive memory in my mind, and I definitely enjoyed my time with it. As a whole, Ratchet & Clank 2016 is a wonderful game with great characters, an entertaining story, fantastic gameplay, and some cool world building that create an overall incredible gaming experience. Is it a game of the year contender? Well, no. But it's exactly what I'd ask for from a game like this. It's simple, yet well crafted, and creates an enjoyable 20 or so hours that you'll always remember as a fun time. While it's not a God of War level quality, it does what it's expected to at the highest level, and overall makes for an incredible game that is well worth playing if you haven't already. I loved Ratchet & Clank 2016, and I only hope you all pick up your wrenches and play some entries from this series. Thanks for watching. So sit back, relax, and take comfort in the knowledge that Drek Industries is working for you. Drek Industries is not working for you. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, check out my High on Knife video and subscribe. Leave a like or comment and let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Until then.